Welcome to my YouTube channel once again. Brethren in the Lord, today we'll be talking about the mark of the beast and how it is glaring and staring at us at the face and we can't even figure it out. Yeah, brethren, I'll start by saying the Bible says at the end time, men will become lovers of themselves. They will become lovers of their flesh. The thing about the devil, what made the devil start rebelling against God first was loving himself. He felt he should be the one being glorified instead of God. Brethren, I want to bring you to the reason why I said the mark of the beast is here already without us even knowing it. If you check the most trending thing on life in, in the society today is about the social media. And we all know people that control the social media are all these celebrities. Celebrities that young people idealize, idol, idolize. They idolize these celebrities without even knowing the implication. And why do you think social media handles, uh, most of them, Instagram have followers, Twitter followers, all of these things just have followers. And these celebrities are the number one people that rule the social media world. You see a celebrity that has millions of followers. What do you think the devil is trying to say? The devil is trying to win souls by using these people. They use their glamour, their, their, their ways of shiny lifestyle, fast cars, uh, pretty skimpy dressed women in their videos to entice youths. They make you feel this is the way and you idolize those people and leave people who you are supposed to idolize, idolize in, 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 in for you to, 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 to cage your soul from the devil devil's prey the devil is a predator and is after your soul nothing more he can give you the whole world that is why the devil was not even scared of even going to tempt the the the, the personal lord and savior himself jesus christ who owns the whole world the devil went and tempted him that he was going to give him the whole world if he was ready to bow down to him brethren i want us to open our eye and see that the end time is 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 in our very before we are looking at it face to face you see these celebrities, you idolize them, they are, your they, are, they are your number one, they are your mentors. People who don't stay in marriage, divorce is like, is like drinking water to them. They do it every now and then. Uh, you check again, uh, sexuality, if you see homosexuality, they are the number one people that promote this thing. And they are also the number one people that promote nudity. These people promote drugs. They do drugs as if it was nothing. Making people to, you see young people, they will follow these people and be taking drugs. You, 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 you want to follow young women like them. That's why you see these boys doing Yahoo. Because they sell their souls to the devil since they can't. These people have already traded their soul to the devil. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all of them, but most of them. They have traded their soul for the enjoyment of this world. They have forfeited their, their eternal enjoyment for the one in this world. That is why you see them getting divorced. They portray that they, they are selling the devil's market in order to get uh, earthly gains. So they are enjoying themselves at the detriment of losing their soul. They have already lost it, so they don't care. Now, you that is not enjoying, you have not traded your soul. You, have not, you are not enjoying any earthly uh, uh, money or fast cars or you are not enjoying any. Then you are idolizing those people. Now you are going to lose your soul. You, suffer, you have suffered here on earth. You didn't enjoy any of these things. And you go and suffer in eternity again. When will you get sense? I pray the Lord opens our eyes to see that this, this beast, these demons are in our very before. They are glaring at us face to face. They are disguised in a way that you don't see. I pray that God gives you the, the spirit of discernment so that you'll be able to protect your soul from these devourers, these predators of soul. I pray God helps us. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Gracias and mercy. Let the Lord help us all. Amen. Brethren in the Lord, <clears throat> today we'll be talking about lust. I'll start by saying most people say <clears throat> there is great power in the tongue. But most people forget to know or to notice that the power that lies in the tongue carries almost the same gravity with the power that the eye, the eye carries. They said the eyes are the window to the soul. Yeah, people that see things can see your soul through your eyes. They are windows to your soul. 
And that is to say your eyes could lead to things that would infiltrate your soul. And when I say that, I mean lust start from the eyes. You look at something with your eyes first. It catches your fancy. Then you start giving it thoughts. You start admiring it. Once you start admiring it, it registers in your brain because you've now had a picture of how it looks. Then once it's stored in your brain, your brain will start processing things you could do with that thing that your mind, have, your eyes have captured and stored on the brain. If it's a woman, you look at a woman. Nobody is saying it's not allowed to. to you are not allowed to look at somebody and just admire. It could be like ah. A fine girl, oh, handsome man, just look at them, remove your face, it's not your business, except if you have something you want to do, you have an agenda, so no, remove your face, immediately after you, your eye catches them, you remove your eye and go about your business, the moment you start admiring, that's when you start noticing, oh, she has a big behind, <clears throat> she has large bosom, before you know, your brain start registering these things on your brain, and once it's registered on your brain that, oh, she's not only a fine face, she has a nice figure, a big behind, and a big bosom, your brain start, your mind start, your brain start telling your mind what you could do to that big bosom and those, that big behind. Before you know, you start troubling yourself, you start wanting to, let me make an illustration with the story, story of David. David was right at his rooftop, taking his fresh air normally. He just saw a nice looking lady. If he had just looked, the Bible said fornication is one of the greatest sins. It's not even a sin against God himself. It's a sin against your body, your flesh. And he said, he did not say if you see uh, fornication or adultery. If he said, don't stay. He knows it is the flesh cannot withstand. He said, flee. He means you should run away. Take off because it's not going to be easy. What David would have done on that rooftop was just look at her, either leave the place or remove his eye and engage in brain, his brain with other things. But he kept his gaze fixed on her. Look at what the thing turned out. It turned out to him, wanting the woman, after sleeping with the woman, he, he committed adultery, he impregnated her, and now to cover for his shame and his sins, he sent the woman's husband forth to go and die in a war before his time. Can you see what these things lead to? A small lust, look how it expanded to a very great thing. But it's not too late for you. Don't the devil always tell you, oh, maybe you, you, have, you have gone too deep in sin that you can't reverse. You can't, the, the, the Lord will not answer your prayer. Once you are true, truly repentant of your sins and you ask God to forgive you, there's nothing. If he can forgive David that slept with somebody's uh, wife and still send the man to die in a battle, then I believe he could do the same to you. Just flee from the, battle, uh, the, the lust of the flesh. Uh, they said, the, the Bible says, if your eyes are going to be what will lead you to hell, you better pluck them and be without eyes than go to hell with your whole body. Your whole body is useless once your soul is going to suffer for eternity. You don't need your eyes in hell. You don't need your eyes. So if there's anything that's going to stop you, look at what uh, these things cause uh, loss. It causes divorce. It causes abortion. It leads to lies. It leads to death. It leads to... There are many things involved. I think lust is one of the worst because you are not only sinning against God, now you are sinning against yourself. I pray God helps us. The only way you can be able to defeat the power of lust is indulge yourself in fasting. If you can train your body that wants to eat food, you train your body and teach your body that I'm in control. It means you are telling your body that you are in control of whatever situation. If you can control your body from eating, and your body needs food then how about sexual pleasures that you could do without what is it that you cannot do without if you can train your body through fasting i believe believe you me that you can overcome temptation nobody's saying you are not going to get tempted we are humans even jesus christ himself was tempted you're going to get tempted but if you are fasting to give you this the spirit you begin to learn the the how to your body will adapt to how to control you won't you won't uh, succumb to little temptations like the body temptation, flesh temptations, because you have already trained your body through fasting to uh, tell your body that, okay, I could do this if I want and I could do this if I don't want. And I can tell you what to do at the time I want to do it. I pray God gives us the energy, the strength, the zeal 
to learn from his words and open our minds when we learn so that we safeguard our soul from the one who prays. He's a predator of the soul. He's a reaper of the soul. He's an investor. He invests where he did not sow. So pray God helps us so that we can see through his antics, his craftiness, and his cunningness. May the Lord help us all. In Jesus' name. Amen.